Remember all the times when challenges kept pouring over your life. And it hurt as if it won't ever stop. But it did. Remember all the times when storms hindered you from moving forward and you thought you'd never make it. But you did. Those moments when winds blew you further and you thought you'd lost your way, but you were found. From all the breaking you went through, you witnessed God building your breakthrough. Do you still remember? The sins that you've committed were forgiven once and for all. All this time, He has been saving you. In your desire to be great, He is purifying you. He called you for a purpose. And your plans totally changed. He is orchestrating beyond what you can imagine. He made sure He has prepared you. God redeemed you, chose you, equipped you. He has done great things in your life. And He isn't finished with you yet. Remember what He's done. And trust the God that He is. He has not forgotten. He has grounded you through the rains. He has grounded you through the storms. He has grounded you through the winds. Because you're built on Christ. And now, to give you your very first session, comes someone who will show you how to lay a strong foundation. She's one of the few girls in her class of mechanical engineering. She loves singing, playing music, cooking, and reading. A gentle soul who loves to play and pray. Introducing your first speaker for the day, Darin Fernandez. Hello, everyone. This is your site engineer, Dalreen. Based on my past experience as a site engineer, I'm here to share with you all the crucial elements of a successful construction project. Now you can be assured that at the end of this session, you will be good and wise builders. I hope you're excited as I am for all that's in store. We are so happy that you all chose to spend this weekend here at the RYC to be renewed and challenged once again to live holy lives. As you know, at every conference every year, God reveals to us a new theme. And since the last year, God is calling us to abide in Him and through this union to branch out and bear much fruit. None of us may have imagined that this year would bring so much uncertainty into our lives. Maybe we even feel lost because we had placed our identity in things. Like maybe we were used to being a good footballer, a stunning athlete, an amazing dancer. But now we're stuck at home. And maybe we feel lost because we had identified ourselves with these things. This year, God is calling us to a new theme, Build Strong, taken from Matthew 7 verse 25. In other words, God is calling us to build our lives on some solid ground, to be anchored onto something as strong as a solid rock. Now why rock? What is the characteristic of a rock? A rock is a hard substance, something that is firm, tough, enduring and strong. Yes, brothers and sisters, Jesus is that strong rock of our lives. Jesus is that foundation that we can strongly build our lives upon. The decisions we make, the way we act in public, the choices we make when no one's around, all these things need to be founded on Jesus. Jesus needs to be the foundation of my life. So, what exactly is a foundation? A foundation is the most important member of a structure. It is the element that anchors the entire structure of a building to the ground and provides stability to it. Now, if you've ever been to a construction site or you've seen a house being constructed, you'll notice that the builders actually dig into the ground and they pour some concrete into it. That is the foundation that helps the entire building to stand firm. Now, Jesus speaks about the foundation that our spiritual lives must have by using the parable of the two builders. So let's listen to this parable taken from Matthew 7 verses 24 to 27. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and struck that house. 
but it did not collapse because it had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came and the winds blew and struck that house and it collapsed and was completely ruined. So I hope you all were paying close attention because I have a few questions for you. The chat box is open so you can type in your answers very quickly, okay? So first question, who does Jesus mention in the parable? Come on, type it down. Who does Jesus mention? Yeah, so he speaks of two men, right? Two builders. Um, does he mention any difference between their skills or like the money that they had to build their house? No, right? He doesn't mention any difference between the skills that they had or the resources that they had. So then, what was the difference between these two builders? Come on, type it down. Yeah, one was wise and the other was a fool. And why was one wise and why was the other foolish? Because the wise man built his house on solid rock, while the fool built his house on some loose sand. And when the storm came, the house built on sand collapsed. And what a mighty fall that was. So let's sum up this parable. Jesus is calling you and me to be like the wise builder and to build a house which is our life on rock. You know what? Let's actually get into this parable by really becoming builders. So I'm going to draw a scene up here and I want you to draw it with me. So quickly get yourselves a sheet and a pen and let's draw. So first, we'll draw a rock. Okay. And if you remember, who did we say that this rock is? Yes, Jesus himself, right? So let's name this rock Jesus. So, Jesus is calling us to build on rock. So now let's build something. Let's build a house. So let's draw a house together. You can draw a simple house. It doesn't have to be really good in construction wise. Let's draw a door to it maybe. Okay. So what did we say this house was again? Our lives, right? So let's name this house our life. So, Jesus is calling us to build a house, which is our life, on some solid rock, who is Jesus Christ himself. But the parable also mentions the foolish builder who built his house on sand, right? So, let's draw a sand bed. You can draw some sand. So now tell me, if Jesus is the rock, what is the sand? So this sand can be referred to as all the worldliness. So let's name this sand worldliness. Now the foolish builder built on the sand, right? So let's build on the sand. We could probably build another house. So let's draw another house. And what is this house again? It is my life. So what is exactly this worldliness that we're talking about? These worldly things could be our career, a particular relationship, our own set of skills and talents, or anything that we are clinging on to very dearly in our lives. Now all these things in themselves are very good, but when our life only revolves around them, that's when they distract us from Jesus and from growing in holiness. 
But the parable it doesn't only speak about the wise and the foolish ones who built their houses on rock and sand, right? It also speaks about the storms. So let's draw some storms. Maybe you can draw like some rain or some floods. Like some lightning to depict storms. Um, for me, you know, failure was a major storm in my life. You know, I really wanted to get into a medical career after my 12th. And I studied really hard for it. Like I staked everything for it. And I, even after all my hard work and effort, I still couldn't get in even after the second attempt. And that's when my life was completely shattered. Because a career is not something which is certain or solid like a rock, right? So as soon as the storm came, my life soon crumbled because I had built my life on something as changeable as the sand. So anxiety is another storm in my life. You know, whenever I have to submit some assignment at work, I'm constantly anxious about what the results are going to be. Like if there's something going to be wrong in it, what's going to happen? What's going to happen if there are some mistakes in it? And all of this anxiety, it really consumes me and it strips me off of my joy and my peace. And you know, when the results aren't good, that's when my entire life crumbles because I keep building my life on things such as my talents, my own capabilities, my own skills. And when things don't work out, my life is shattered. Another failure in my life that I keep experiencing, another storm in my life that I keep experiencing is rejection. Like I can't handle being rejected by people. Especially when my friends reject me. You know, so many times in my life, I've even done bad things like gossiped about other people, spoiled people's names, um, even asked my parents to buy me some fancy stuff and expensive stuff just so that my friends would have a better opinion of me. And even after all this, when they would still reject me, I would be shattered because I was building my life on people on friends, something that is so changeable like the sand. And the moment any storm hits by, like the storm of rejection in my life, my entire life crumbles. So what are the storms in your life? Brothers and sisters, I encourage you to think about the storms in your own life. Maybe this recent pandemic has hit you like the storm and has brought so much of uncertainty in your career, in your grades, in your future. Maybe because you were constantly building your life only centered on your career. Maybe you have lost a loved one and you feel completely shattered because maybe that person was the center of your life. Maybe your boyfriend or your girlfriend has broken up with you. And maybe you feel completely worthless because maybe you were building your life only centered around that particular person. Or maybe the, the negative thoughts, the negative things that people say to you and they bombard you with, all these lies have been, you know, the storms in your life. And this is maybe because you were building your life only on their opinion of you. And when their opinion, just like the sand, the changeable sand, when their opinions of you change, that's when maybe your life has crumbled. So brothers and sisters, think of all the storms in your life and name them. And maybe you can even think of all the worldly things that you've constantly been building your life on and name them on the sand as well. So, why is Jesus asking us to build our lives on Him? Because 
just as a solid rock is firm and durable jesus alone is the one who will be there with us no matter what even if we feel unloved unaccepted jesus alone is the one who will love us through every storm so let me ask you a question what is easier and quicker to build upon solid rock or loose sand we all know that it's quite challenging to build on rocky terrain right it would involve a lot of patience and hard work and time to actually dig and chip that rock similarly building our lives on christ involves an investment it requires us to invest our time in jesus like we can't just say you know god i've prayed for 5 minutes today and i'm done with my personal prayer You know the wise man knew that all his time and patience would be worth the effort. And indeed, built on rock, the wise man's house was able to withstand the storms. Similarly, we need to invest our lives in Jesus by learning more about him, by spending time with him in prayer, reading scripture, examining our own lifestyles. And as we learn more about him through scripture and through the sacraments, it involves making christ centered decisions and choices now it's not going to be an easy task for sure it may require a great deal of courage to break that sinful habit in our lives it may require daily sacrifices to do to do the right thing even though the other path was more pleasurable and fun you know it was not easy for me during my major career failure it was a constant struggle but somehow i just mustered up the courage to read the bible it was definitely not easy to pray but as i read the bible god reassured me through the words in psalm 34 verse 18 where it says the lord is close to the broken hearted and helps the crushed in spirit every time i would fall back into a depression these words would give me renewed strength knowing that god is in control of my life investing our lives our choices our decisions in jesus is a daily process like every time i'm tempted to watch maybe an impure tv show or some impure content i have to make that decision to avoid it you know very often it seems to me that the most successful people in this life are the ones who live the most terrible and double sided lives but god always reassures me that i was not made for only this world that i was made for eternity the foolish man was not really a bad man right it's just that he did not consider the foundation important enough to invest his time in it he probably wanted quicker and easier results and that's why probably he chose to build on loose sand Many a times we are also like this foolish builder, right? I mean, we pray to God, and then when we don't get what we pray for very quickly, we soon lose trust in Him and we give up on Him. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you, even if you have a lot to study or loads of assignments to complete, we will still make Jesus our priority because we were not called to build our lives only on our studies or on our career. we will still give jesus our best we will still make time for our personal prayer and the reading of his word you know every time we we may suffer a hard break or the loss of a dear one let us go to the blessed sacrament and let us cry out to jesus and tell him how hurt we are he will console us he will walk with us through it let us make an effort to go and receive Jesus in the holy eucharist as many times as possible and even if we keep committing the same sins time and again let us frequent the sacrament of confession because every time we walk out of that confessional we receive greater strength to overcome these temptations you know just like the house built on sand was able to stand when the climate was calmer and more favorable 
We may also find ourselves becoming successful or famous even as we keep prioritizing these worldly things. But we will face storms and these things will not sustain us for eternity. They may only sustain us for a while. In the face of storms, only if we build our lives on Christ will we be able to come out stronger and wiser after the storm settles, knowing that God is in control of our lives. You know, St. Paul sums all of this up very well in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11. He says, There is only one foundation for living the abundant life that God wants to give us. Our lives need to be founded only on the one sure foundation who is Jesus Christ. So, how do we build our lives on Jesus Christ who is our rock? The secret of building our lives on Jesus is found in the first line of the parable where Jesus says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them is like a wise man who built his house on rock. Jesus speaks of two things, right? Firstly, hearing his word and secondly, doing it or acting upon it. Similarly, we need to be hearers as well as doers of God's word in order for us to be able to build a house on rock. So, what does being hearers and doers of God's word mean? It means standing up for our faith even though it may cost us. It means doing the right thing even though our friends may think we are uncool or may single us out. It's not about just going with the trend, right? It's about knowing what is right and standing up for it even though we may be mocked at. So every time you have to face a decision or make a decision in life, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Every time you feel tempted, call on to Jesus and tell him you need him and ask him to help you through that temptation. And you know what? I have some good news for you. Our model for founding our lives on Jesus and on his word is our very own Mama Mary. Mama Mary always pondered the word of God in her heart. And this helped deepen her faith in God and increase her obedience in God's will, knowing that God is in control of her life. And she was victorious through every storm, even though the storms in her life were great and mighty. Brothers and sisters, she knows our struggle. She knows our pain. She has been through it all. Let us run to Mama Mary then. Let us look to her and learn from her. She will make us more like Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you. Keep this activity sheet safely with you. And every time you're faced with a new storm in your life, let's add it to the sheet. And every time then when we look at these sheets, let us remember that we have made a firm commitment to build our lives on Jesus and on his word. So let us firmly pledge to build our lives, our families and our community on Jesus the Rock.